Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to be looking at understanding the power of prayer. Part two. Understanding the power of prayer. Part two. In part one, we talked about effect of prayer. Who can tell us the three effects we talked about? Two weeks ago. Effect of prayer. Yes. Yes. Into the presence of God. Yes. Fellowship with God. Yes. It releases power. What else? Our uh, boldness. Prayer makes you to be bold. The Bible says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. We are going to be looking at part two today. Understanding the power of prayer. So we are going to start by looking at wrong principles in prayer. Wrong principles in prayer. The things that people do, but they are not actually prayer. Wrong principles in prayer. Number one is murmuring. 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 Murmuring turn God against us. And make the enemy to attack us. Now, most of the time, we don't think that we murmur really. But in such instance, you think you are praying as you are murmuring to God. And instead of you murmuring, all you need to do is to talk to God, present your case before Him. And when you murmur or you complain about what you have not received from God, you are saying that God is not a faithful God. Most of the time, it's because you lack faith in God. That's where you murmur against God. Maybe your business is not moving forward as you expect it to move forward. Oh, now, you know these kind of people will now say I have, I have prayed now I have done everything I need to do why is it that these things you know people usually do that and I'm serving God when I go to church regularly what is happening now the moment you, you do that the moment you say that you are saying that I'm a faithful person, but God is not faithful. And ordinarily, because you are a Christian, you have one enemy. And the enemy is the devil. But when you now murmur against God, God also becomes your enemy. And you have enemy times two. And the Bible says in Hebrew 10 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That is, if God becomes your enemy, and then that's come. And one of the things that can make us to become the enemy of God is when you murmur instead of praying. In the amplified version of Hebrew 10 31, amplified version. Say, it is a fearful, formidable, and terrible thing to incur the divine penalty and be cast into the hands of the living God. So if instead of praying, you are complaining that well, my life will have shifted from this level. What you are saying is, God, you are not faithful to me. Kakaki and Mark Badra, tell one so boy, a kick, but me to call Jabby, oh, tear, so Nick, oh, Laurel, a king, she looks. Some women say, I don't even understand my life now. And when me as a big bear, yeah, me, I go to church every day. And I pay my title. I, I can't even explain what is happening. Now, you may not know, but what you are doing is you are murmuring against God. If you look at Numbers chapter 11, verse 1, Numbers 11, verse 1, the Bible says, And when the people complain, it displeased the Lord. When they complain, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the upper part of the camp. They murmur, but God killed all of them. 
When you murmur, he closes your heavens. Why don't you talk to him concerning that situation? No. When you pray to God, God answers you in the spiritual realm. Now, to you, you might not have seen the result immediately. But I can tell you that the result has been released to you. That's where you need to be thanking God regularly. Because as you pray, He has answered your prayer. But to you, you have not seen the physical evidence. It doesn't matter. Like we said in the Sunday school, there are timing when you will receive that in your heart. So all you need to do is to be thanking him. In First Peter chapter five verse seven. First Peter chapter five verse seven. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Cast your care. Instead of complaining, hand it over to him. The prayer you pray in January, the answer is in June. And the prayer you pray today, the answer is today. And because you don't know the timing of God, don't complain that you have not received it. Number two. We are looking at wrong principles in prayer. Number two is crying. Number two is crying. Now, when you worship God, tears can come out from your eyes. When you feel sorrow for your sin, tears can come out of your eyes when you are interceding for someone you want that person to have changed and the person is not sure you are interceding for a nation you can cry for that person or for that nation but when you are seeking the face of god for a particular thing in your life what god is expecting from you is prayer not crying because when you are talking to your father and you cry you are strengthening the hands of the devil most of the time the thing that you have not received the devil is is walking up and down for you not to receive it don't forget that when you are sick it's not from god most of the time sin can cause it the devil can cause it and the devil can cause it so in that situation when you cry you are making the enemy to feel that he has defeated you all you need to do is to decree in prayer look at that testimony the woman said she was not that strong not that strong and that instead of taking the drug she decided to do the thing God wanted her to do most times when you have a headache and you pray the headache might not go immediately but in the spiritual realm God has taken the headache away what you see is just the symptoms of the headache but when you cry in the place of prayer you are just strengthening the devil that you have been and most of the time it's the song that we sing that, that make the cry to come instead of praying I've heard some people who sing do you think he's not concerned about your life he's concerned but you're only making the devil to feel that God has forsaken you. The Bible says in Job 22, 28. I want us to read it together so that we can understand this. Job 22, 28. Can we read it together? Ready? Let's go. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thee. You shall decree. When you decree, you don't weep. 
Tu vas pas chez où? You are saying that I am. I have the authority of God, and I decree that this must come to pass. So we be only a sure Lord, no more than we be my wasi moche. So he's not sleeping. Psalm 121 verse 4 talks about it. That behold, he that keepeth Israel, neither sleep nor slumber. So when you say Lord, no more than we be my wasi moche. Is not sleeping. And your crying does not bring answer to you. It's your decree that brings answer to your prayer. Because when you cry, sometimes you discover that you end it with crying. You will not end it with the name of Jesus. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians 3, 17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father oh, by him. I've seen some people pray and say, God, God one, God two, God three. So if you don't do it this month, I will backslide. My, my answer to you is backslide. And let's see who is going to lose. Let's look at number three. Number three is playing. Yes, playing. You are praying and you are pressing your phone. You are praying and oh, uh, Auntie, Auntie Wale, I'm coming, I'm praying, I will get back to you. That's a very wrong principle in prayer. You are simply telling God that God is not that important to you. If you put off your phone for 30 minutes, you will not die. A lot of people, their prayer is on Facebook. Prayer is not playing. So people just post on Facebook and they, snap, and they will snap themselves. My people, pray for me. Oh, I am very sick now. Who are you talking to? You are talking to the enemy that wants you to be sick. A lot of people, everything about their life they post it on facebook that's not prayer prayer is between you and god not between you and the whole world on facebook watching. so prayer is not playing don't turn prayer into a joking matter prayer requires preparation most of the time if i want to pray everything i'm going to pray on I I will have written it down. In fact, it is important for you to write down before you pray. The Bible verse you want to use in, in praying is important for you to write it down. If you prepare for 30 minutes and you pray for 5 minutes, it's more preferable. There are no preparation that we pray for 30 minutes and you didn't see anything. So prayer is not playing. I've asked some people who pray and say, Baba God, see, I, I don't commit sin. Now you go forgive me. That's not, you're not praying, you're joking. Some people will say they will continue to commit sin. God will be so angry. Some people will say they will continue to commit sin. God will be so angry that we want to throw them to hell fire. He will overthrow them. And they will jump over every fire and go to heaven. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer is not a joking matter. In Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. You know, Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. Bible says, "For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God." To the pulling down of strongholds. Number four. Number four. Type of clothes. Type of clothes. Now, prayer has nothing to do with the clothes you put on. What I'm wearing now is uniform. uniform. My brother there that is wearing yellow. And myself that I'm wearing this white. What differentiates him from me is a color of clothes. And the style of clothes. This is not more powerful than the one he's wearing. Abi, Abi, 
Abi uh, agree kwelu mi ni. Oh, you are not agreeing. It's, with it's also me. power. Koni agbara. It's just our uniform. O kon ji aso ti gbogbo wa nwo. Ade fi amuresi. And we put guard. O fa amuresi o fa amuresi koni agbara kan kan. Whether you put guard or not, it's it just the way power. we dress. Be ashe mura ni. Now, some people are taking prayer with cloth to another level by saying that there are some prayer you dare not wear white, you have to wear red. But as I'm red, thank you. Uh, blue, God. God bless you. It will ask you to It will ask you to You see, how, yellow. You see how they deceive us. Those things, those things do not exist anywhere. They are wrong principle in prayer. Okay, so, assuming you are inside a vehicle, and the vehicle wants to have accident, and you are going to your office with tie and with your shirt, with your suit and everything, and you needed to right? pray. For a shagun inside the vehicle. Who are you going to call to quickly bring out your red, your red garment so that you can wear it inside the vehicle? She will have died inside the vehicle. So you see that you can play the garment. They are just deceiving us. But it's a uniform for us to for us to look the same. So type of clothes. Is a wrong way of praying. Number five. Like special venue. Special venue. Now, so people will say that there are some prayer you can pray inside the church. That's why they create a place called Mercy Land. So Adura Mercy Land is a home where you can pray inside the church. Number six. Number six. Number six. Number six. The mercy land prayer will be more powerful than church prayer. It is not correct. Some people, even inside their house, they are so used to it that they want to pray. And shoe is still on their leg. They will have to remove the shoe before they will pray in their own house. It's not correct. If you are in your place of work and you need to pray, you will pray with that shoe. So those are wrong things that people do and it's not correct in prayer. Let's look at wrong way of praying. Wrong way of praying. People pray like this but it's a very wrong way to pray. Number one. Praying with an option. Praying with an option. Option is an alternative to your prayer. That is, this is your prayer, but you have another alternative to it. So you want success in your business. But you... Okay, so you are going to pray this afternoon for your business to move forward. But before you start the prayer, you have called your brother in the village. The way things are going, I don't understand. If in the next one month, I do not see changes in my business. I will come back to the village. Prepare for me. I will pack all my load. I'm coming back. After you have said that to your brother, then you will not come to church. Oh, Lua, my business must move forward. Things must move forward. That prayer will not be answered. Because before you start the prayer, you have already told someone that your prayer will not be answered. You are coming back to the village. You have option before you pray, that prayer will not be answered. You see, you know, when they want to get married, they will say, for better, for worse. Abi? They will say, for richer, for poorer. Abi? In sickness and in health. What have you done? You have said that there will be a time that will be rich, there will be a time that will be poor. There will be a time that I will be in health, there will be a time that will not be in health. Bishop, David Zoe, you know, 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 you
Bishop boy, he said when he was to marry his wife. And he went to a bishop. And the bishop told him. Bishop, no, so You know it is good like this, though. But when you get married, it will not always be good. Though. Things can be turning upside down once in a while. You, can, you might have challenges up and down. He said, after the bishop has told him that, he now said, Sir, I disagree with you, sir. Well, my Bible told me that. Whatsoever you open your mouth to say, it should be like that for you. So for, for better, for worse, is not for me. Then the bishop said, I have a question for you. And he said, it will be for better, for best. And it will be for richer, for prosperity. And he said, do you know what it will be for richer, for prosperity. And he said, do you know what it will be for richer, for prosperity. And he said, do you know what it will be for richer, for prosperity. And he said, do you know what it will be for richer, for prosperity. And he said, do you know what it will be and that has helped him in his marriage up to now. When you are praying and you have said something negative to that prayer, that prayer will not be answered. That's why our lesson today, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and verse 6. Trust in the law with all your heart, all your heart. Learn not on your own understanding. Let it be from all. Don't have option. Man, no don't say things will move forward in case it doesn't move forward. No, no, don't Man, say so that. On one dara and verse oh, 6 dara. says, in all your way, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Never have an alternative to your prayer. Man, no because some people say, well, we want to get married, we don't have a child, we just get married. And, and, in, case is, is, and in case there is a problem, well, we'll, we'll find a way around it. I can tell you there will be a problem. Because you have created that alternative. And that's a wrong way to pray. Number two. Praying in ignorance. Praying in ignorance. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Say, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And when they have no knowledge. Osia chapter 4 verse 6 we also talk about it. Osia chapter 4 verse 6 also talk about it. Osia My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And, when you shake, and there are many instances people have prayed with ignorance. Oh, the devil. Die by fire. 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 The devil is a spirit. He can't die. His time has not come for him to go to hellfire. So when you pray for the next one now, the devil die, devil die, devil die. You are just doing exercise. Because he cannot die. How many of you have heard this song? Where did you see the Satan that you are slapping? So when you are doing that and you are jumping, your energy is so huge, you want to slap the Satan, you are wasting your time because you can't even see him. So those are wrong ways of praying and you pray in ignorance when you do that. Bible told us to pray with understanding. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's look at verse 15. Yes. I will pray with my spirit and I will also pray with understanding it's okay i will pray with understanding don't pray in ignorance crying that you want to slap the devil is praying in ignorance and that way people pray in ignorance by praying and say we pray through jesus our lord that's not what the bible says we pray 
through Jesus. Oh, the Bible says you should pray in the name of Jesus. Not through Jesus our Lord. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you pray like that, you didn't get answers because you pray in ignorance. Number three. Praise the Lord. We are looking at the wrong way of praying. Number three. Like it, uh. Praying with justification. Big bad, we pay at all. Yes, praying with justification. Big bad, we pay at all. I want us to look at a particular Bible verse. Let someone that can read Bible very well look at Luke 18. We look at Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke I want us to look at verse 10 to 14. Verse 10, 10 to 14. Luke 18. 10 and 14. I want us to look at it. Who is reading it now? Now, I want us to look at it critically where two people went to the house of God to pray. They went to, to God to pray. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And pray. No law. Yes. 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 Now look at this one. This one was talking to God that God, in, you know, I am not like the other person. You know. I come to church regularly. In fact, I am the first person to come to church. I pay my tithe regularly. I don't miss my tithe. I am faithful to you. Continue. Or even like the tax collector. See, I'm not even like the other person. I fast twice a week. I also fast regularly. And give a tenth of. I also, if, if I, I help all the poor in my street. But the tax collector. But look at the second one. He stood at a distance. He just stood. If I couldn't even get close to the altar. He would not even look up to heaven. He would not even lift up his eye to the heaven. But beat his breast and say. And say to God. 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 Have mercy on me. Have mercy upon me. A sinner. Yes. I tell you that this man. This one. Now, one is justifying himself. Thank you, God bless you. No, oh, I'm a very righteous person. I pay my tithe regularly. I'm a very faithful person. I come to church regularly. I fast twice in a week. And so, a lot of people do that. God, you need to bless me. You want to have to do with my service before you have done very well. I have done everything that you have commanded me to do. Only that you have not played your own part. What are you telling God? You are telling God that you are faithful. But God is not faithful. Is it possible for God not to be faithful? In Romans chapter 3 verse 4. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. The Bible is a let God be true. Let everyone be a liar. Say, God forbid. Let God be true. But Your every man. Be liar. So when you are justifying yourself, you are saying, God, I am true, you are you are a liar. So you must not pray with justification. You are righteous by Jesus that you believe in. Not by your effort. So, when you are praying, count God to be faithful, not you. Because God is ever faithful. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good to them that believe in God. So don't justify yourself in prayer. Now you can tell the devil that you know the God you are serving. But don't tell God that you are more righteous than other person in prayer. Because only God is faithful. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. The Lord is faithful. Yes. He is the Lord that will establish you and keep you from evil. He is the only one that is faithful. So, so do, do not do. justify yourself in prayer. Number four. Number four. Making prayer a religious activity. 
Making prayer a religious activity. That's the wrong way to pray. Making prayer a religious activity. If you don't use God, you can't pray. I remember someone was telling me, I wanted to pray in those days in a particular church and I didn't use the God. Because it is our uniform. So when you wear garment, you must wear God. That is a heightly standard. But the person told me that if you don't use Gadu, the devil will beat you. When he knows how he beats you, if you pray and God answer the prayer, if the devil retaliates against you, it will affect you because you didn't use Gadu. See, and that is not correct. Now, for some of you that wear your white garment now and you didn't wear your gadu it's not correct you all know that when you wear the white garment you must wear the gadu but when you are praying it doesn't mean that the reason why the devil will beat you is because you didn't use the gadu are we together now now a lot of people believe that only the prayer you pray in the open that can be answered. So when you pray in your home, they believe that that prayer cannot be answered. When you pray anywhere, God answers you. Praying to Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a religious activity. Now, I am not saying don't pray to her. She did where? Well to have given back to our Lord Jesus Christ. We need, to, we need to appreciate her for the grace of her being the mother of Jesus. So if you want to pray and say, I, I want to recognize the mother of Jesus, she has done very well. You too, you have done very well. But I'm only telling you that it's just a religious activity. It doesn't make your prayer to be answered. Whether you call Mary or you don't call Mary, it doesn't matter. In Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. The Bible says that a lot of people are making the word of God of, of non effect through their tradition. Through their tradition. You're making the word of God of non effect through your tradition. So many things that are not correct. People are introducing it into the things of God. And it's affecting the word of God. For example, Call the name of Jesus Christ. Seven times. Blood of Jesus. Seven times. Fire of the Holy Spirit. And then after you have shouted seven, seven, seven like that. Once you now finish the prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Fire, fire, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Hey, Amen. You are just doing exercise. I can she exercise in him. It's exercise. Exercising. All you need to do is pray in the name of Jesus. Whether you call the name 100 times or you call the name of Jesus once, it's the same name. If the devil just hear J, only the J alone. You have not completed it. It's already shaking. Instead of now calling 21 times, one day. Bishop Oyedepo said he was traveling from one state to another state. And so they, they got to a particular bridge. And the bridge was very narrow. And a, a tipper with 18 tires was also coming. Unfortunately, that bridge, only one vehicle can pass through that bridge at a time. They have entered the bridge. And the 18 tire lorry has also entered the bridge. And so the driver that was driving was so afraid that this is dead facing them. And he began to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And Bishop, we do a question. He just said, In Jesus. Mighty name. Uh, all of a sudden, name. they found themselves at the other end of the bridge. The, the lorry entered the bridge with them. How they found themselves at the end of the bridge, they couldn't explain. 
the driver now say, ah, Father, thank you. And you know, if at the point that they even get to the end of the bridge, the, the driver was still shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Bishop Odebo said, he now told, told him, it seems you don't understand the power in the name of Jesus. That you call the name once. Host of heaven have gathered to save us. So you don't need to call the name of Jesus 21 times. They are just, they are just deceiving you. They are just wasting your time. Call Jesus 21 times. Call Jesus 100 times. His name is so powerful that when you call the name once like this, fire begins to happen. And it's the same, either 21 times, either one time. In John chapter 16, verse 23. You are looking at making prayer a religious activity. John, John 16, 23. He said, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father. In my name, I will give it. In his name. Not in his name. Ten times. Not in his name. Hundred times. In his name. In his name. If I'm standing here, and you want to call me, and you call me once, and the brother there wants to call me, and call me seven times, it doesn't make any meaning. I will, because you are closer to me, I will hear you the one time. Because you are closer to me, you only call me seven times. The first time you have called, I've heard you. So, by yourself, you can decide to call me seven times. The only disadvantage of it is, why this person call me once? I will answer. And then the remaining time, he can tell me or she can tell me what she want me to do. Why she has told me what she want me to do and I've given him or her what she requested for. You are still calling me. You are still saying, Daddy, 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 Daddy. daddy, 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 daddy. daddy. This one has called once. This one has tabled the request. I have granted the request. She has gone to go and enjoy herself. But you are still calling the name of the person that have answered you the first time. These are just religious activities. Many people cannot pray one o'clock. Many cannot pray two o'clock. It has to be twelve. It has to be 3. It has to be 6 p.m. It has to be 9 p.m. All those 3, three hours, Abi. Now, let me explain to you. There are times that you need those hours of prayer so that it can remind you of the time to pray. So I, I do that as well. That I need to pray 12. I need to pray 3. I need to pray 6. No, that, that is the time God will answer me. It's just that so that time can remind me that I need to pray at that time. Whether you pray at 1 27 point five hours or you pray at, at 9 p.m is the same god is the same god now are you understanding what i'm saying really so it doesn't matter the time that you pray it's just people making all those in religious activities and finally lakoto we are looking at the wrong way to pray. But what we say when people pray with an option, it's the wrong way to pray. When people pray in ignorance, it's the wrong way to pray. Praying with justification is the wrong way to pray. Making prayer a religious activity is the wrong way to pray. And then finally, number five. Praying in sin. Praying in sin. You just slept with another person's wife. 
And then you know the father. You are a good girl. You are wasting your time. You just stole in your office. You just embezzle you money. And then you come to church on Sunday. From the money you embezzle, you pay tithe. Oh, father, you are a great girl. Your dancing in the church is even greater than every other person. You are wasting your time. Number one, God will not accept the dancing. God will not accept the offering. If, hallelujah, as this church is, that we still need resources to do a lot of things here. If Boratos is here, should come to this church today and bring an offering of 10 million era. After the service, I will call him. I will say, bros, what has just happened? We will need to talk. It's not a church. We have someone just bring money and we are rejoicing. He has brought money. No. We want to know what you are doing that brought the money to you. So that it will not become a cost for you. Because when you pray in sin, you incur cost upon yourself. And as long as you remain in sin, your prayer cannot be answered. It is canonical that brings calamity. It is you walking in your flesh that makes your prayer not to go anywhere. Psalm 66 verse 18. Psalm 66 verse 18. Can we read it together? Can we see? Ready? Let's go. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not Let's start from the men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ready? Let's go. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Do you know the meaning? If you have slept with a woman that is not your wife, and you have said this word now, is that not a cause? Because God will not hear you. Eh, kile ulo tu tobi ju, ikatu ato tobi ju otimi muda. Is one that is greater than non normal drink. Eh, codeine abi kena kwe. If you are still taking codeine, and you just say this prayer, ah, omani de ikatu osoi bayi. What you just said? You have brought something to your head. You will need a huge deliverance. Anilo itusile. Otherwise, what would, fire will start burning you right now inside. So sin must be put away before you can pray to God. The Bible says that God wants to answer our prayer. In Isaiah fifty-nine, one to three. And then we will end from here. He said, I want to answer your prayer. But the reason it seems I have not answered your prayer. You are the one that have not allowed me to answer your prayer. Look at that. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shutting that I cannot save. Neither is he heavy that I cannot hear you. Go to verse 2 and verse 3. But your iniquity, your sin, have made you to be separated from God. And your sin have hid his face from you that he will not hear that he will not hear you. God wants to answer your prayer. How many of you want God to answer your prayer this morning? Can we be upstanding? One thing that will not make God answer your prayer is sin. So you ask him to have mercy upon you. In any area that I've sinned against you, Lord, forgive me. Can you talk to him now? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Father, have mercy upon you. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of tender mercy. Plot out my sin, O Lord. In any area I have not been faithful to you. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. 
Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. It is of your mercy that I am not consumed. For your compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my sin. In the name of Jesus. Then I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Then I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Therefore, it is not to him that will it. Neither is it to him that run it. But to God that shall mercy. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my sin. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now that you have asked for forgiveness, what do you now want him to do for you? Can you talk to him now? Do that for two minutes. We have heard that God answer prayer. He's even looking for you to pray so that he can answer you. All you need to do is to purge yourself from sin and he will hear you. Talk to him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word that you have spoken to us. Thank you for your word of life. Thank you for all your word will do in our life this morning. As a part of given in the name of Jesus. We have asked, O oh Lord, that you forgive us and pardon us of all iniquity, of all sin. O oh Lord, forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. We have poured out our heart unto you. We have asked for one thing or the other. And Lord, I ask that every of our desire, you will grant it unto us today in the name of Jesus. Everything we have asked that you will do by next week Sunday, Father, cause us to have testimony over them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you.